There's a new engine on Shed. Let's take a look at Hornby's A22 Thane of Fife. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Proper Chuffed. My name's Hilton and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But that is half the fun of this, isn't it? If you're new here and you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back guys. It's good to see you again. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm a big fan of strange, weird, sort of one-off prototype locomotives. And today's locomotive is no different. It's certainly an amalgamation of certain design forms from Edward Thompson and Nigel Gresley, all mashed together to create a very unique type of Pacific. Edward Thompson is somewhat of a controversial figure in the steam locomotive historical sense. He certainly made some changes, one of them being to this locomotive, which changed it from the original Mikado type to a more sort of standardized Pacific type. There's a fantastic episode of Railway Mania, a podcast, which discusses Edward Thompson and these changes that he made called Thompson, Hero or Villain. If you're interested in this side of the history of the A22s or Thompson's design principles in general, it's well worth a listen. But today we're gonna to take a look at his A22 Hornby's Thane of Fife. So here we are then with Hornby's A22 in this sort of classic Hornby boxing. Let's take a look at it. I picked this up for about 170 pounds. Sleeve slides off there and we have our A22. Inside the box we have our locomotive manual. All the details we need about the A22s. Seems that this is very closely linked to the A23s, so it's probably a shared manual between the two. Just some information about DCC fitting and maintenance in general. Inside we have a small detail packet including all the braking gear, safety valves, as well as some front steps to attach to the locomotive if you so see fit. And here we are with the Thane of Fife. Rather decent weight to it, we'll check that out in a second. Absolutely, I hate these things. They're absolute nightmares to put locos in and out of. They tend to just sort of fold back on themselves. I've really had to bend this one back to make it more, more easily accessible. But these are absolute nightmares and I really don't want to see them ever again. <laughs> so first things first I noticed with this is that there's a very clear seam on the top of the boiler, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, it's something that I would hope we wouldn't see in more modern locomotives, but here we are. Probably a bit of weathering on the top might sort of bring that down a little bit, but it is there and it's quite noticeable, which is rather frustrating, especially under the sort of more harsh light that I've got here. I think one of the points of contention around this is the color of the livery here. Now it's supposed to be a BR green, or definitely not Brunswick green, we call it bronze green, right? Um, that is the correct term for it, but it's certainly a little bit like pale as a green. It certainly doesn't strike me as the same sort of color that I've seen from other BR green colors. But the livery application here is very, very good and crisp. And the boiler banding is absolutely fantastic here. Couple of lines that have gone out a little bit, but from a distance it's barely noticeable and overall quite impressive. Now the body is plastic as well as the running plate, but it does have a good amount of weight to it. So let's get the scale and see how much it weighs overall. Right, so we have our trusty kitchen scale. Let's see how much this Thane of Fife A22 weighs. And it weighs in at a substantial 451 grams, which is decent. Overall, some fantastic detail here, but let's take a closer look and get some history on the A22 class. The A22 class was designed by Edward Thompson, who became the chief mechanical engineer of the LNER in 1941. Thompson aimed to standardize and modernize the LNER's locomotive fleet, which included redesigning existing classes and creating new ones. The A22 was developed as a rebuild of the P2 class, originally designed by Sir Nigel Gresley, Thompson's predecessor. The P2 class consisted of six powerful 282 Mikado locomotives built between 1934 and 1936, designed for hauling heavy trains on the Edinburgh to Aberdeen line. However, they had several design flaws, including issues with stability and excessive wear on the track, and their own components. Thompson sought to rectify these problems by converting them into a Pacific 462 locomotive, which he believed would offer better stability and reliability. The conversion of the P2 class to the A22 class began in 1943 and was completed by 1944. The key modifications included a conversion of the wheel arrangement from a 282 to a 462 type wheel arrangement, which was more typical of express passenger locomotives in the UK at the time. 
The original boilers were retained, but the cylinder configuration was changed from three to two outside cylinders to simplify maintenance and reduce mechanical complexity. The frame was extensively modified and the locomotives were fitted with Bolshitz valve gear instead of Gresley's conjugated valve gear, which was known for causing maintenance issues. The A22s were used primarily for express passenger services. They operate on the East Coast Main Line and other routes, showing improved reliability and stability compared to their P2 predecessors. However, the locomotives were not without their criticisms. Some railwaymen and enthusiasts felt that the conversions lacked the power and aesthetic appeal of the original P2s. The A22s had a relatively short service life. They were all withdrawn from service between 1959 and 1961 as BR transitioned from steam to diesel and electric traction. None of the A22s were preserved and all were eventually scrapped. While the A22s may not have achieved the legendary status of other steam locomotives, they represent an important period in British railway history. Thompson's approach to locomotive design, including his controversial decisions to rebuild and modify existing classes, continues to be a topic of interest and debate among railway historians and enthusiasts to this day. This may be the most Marmite Pacific ever produced. You either love the look or hate it. I fall into the former camp when it comes to Thompson's designs. I think the A22 is perhaps one of the best looking Pacifics ever produced in the UK, followed very closely by the A1, but that's a video for another day. The striking piece by Hornby is, in my opinion, a total looker, with an imposing nature that is immediately eye-catching. One of the most hotly debated parts of this model is the color of the BR bronze green livery. And while you might look at it right off the bat and assume it to be incorrect, there may be some credence to its color. Flying Scott recently did a video about BR green and livery application, and I would direct you there before we make any sweeping judgments about the color. Regardless, from what we've come to expect from BR Bronze Green, this is certainly a shade lighter than we are used to. Some rather neat boiler bands, cab and footplate lining, crisp cab side numbers, and a stunning late BR logo tie this all together very neatly. The front features turn metal buffers, a factory fitted brake pipe, and a coupling hook. The detailing and rivet work here is rather impressive, with separately fitted lamp irons on the footplate and smoke box door. The small wing deflectors on the top, which are so iconic for this class, really do drive home the unique nature of this class too. The decidedly long boiler, another unique feature of the A22s, features a distinct dome and a firebox across the rear of the chassis. The firebox boasts two very fine handrails leading to the cab, which feature intricate glazed windows in the front openings. Inside the cab, the attention to detail is nothing short of remarkable. The molded and painted details are absolutely outstanding here, highlighting the brass and copper parts, gauges and more. It really is a fantastic little cab. Super impressed with this. Once again, not much to complain about when it comes to running gear from Hornby. Some very fine spokes on these wheels and beautifully assembled gear come together to create a very clean and crisp appearance. Annoyingly, much like the W1 I recently looked at, the rear truck has a flangeless rear wheel set to navigate second radius curves. And much to my chagrin, no replacement flange wheel set is provided. The tender is a classic Gresley eight wheel design. A removable plastic coal load is included with some decent looking coal. Being slightly older, this model features a familiar adjustable length drawbar. The A22 is driven by a strong five pole motor and features an eight pin DCC socket located in the tender with a decent amount of space to fit a small sugar cube speaker or HM7000 at a push. So here we are then on track with the Thane of Fife. Quite a majestic beast I must say. I am very, very fond of this locomotive and the design overall. Let me know in the comments what you think about the A22. So I'd be curious to know if it's one of your favorites or you absolutely despise it. Putting the power down, you can see this five pole motor is doing its job. A very consistent and steady crawl. Smooth and with very little cogging too. I'm rather impressed with this. Now I've already run in this Thane of Five, so there's no need to do so. So we're gonna head straight up the Hill of Despair or the Whiskey Distillery line, whichever you choose. For those of you joining for the first time, this is a between a three and 4% incline and it's a great test of locomotives. It's certainly not designed for large locomotives like this. And as we cross the bridge here and head up the steepest part of the incline, you can see the Thana 5 makes fairly good work of this. There is a little bit of wheel slip as we head up the steepest part, but it handles it overall, and I'm rather impressed with that. So let's jog back down and get onto the main line again. 
Continuing our battery of tests and we get to the cross work and as you can see the Thaner 5 seems to manage this fairly easily. The tender is decently heavy and doesn't seem to derail here as sometimes my others do. So both forwards and backwards I'm rather happy with how this handles the cross work. Right, and now we are getting to the curves. So second and third radius tests and third first. No problems there whatsoever. But it manages the third and of course does the second. It manages that second radius curve with absolute ease. No problems there if you've got second on your layout. Right, so I'm fairly happy with the results of those tests, so let's hook up the Thena 5 to some coaches and get some running in. You may notice in the background Inverness TMD are Resident 37 making the rounds with some concrete and grain hoppers, just doing some steady, diligent work on Dunroman, as construction on the whiskey distillery itself nears completion.
and we're all done for the day. So let's back up the inner fife to the engine sheds and put her away for the evening. Another forgotten locomotive brought back to life by the Dunroman Heritage Trust. Fantastic to see her up in the highlands here and we'll put her away in the shed for the night. This might not be Hornby's finest work or sort of up to the sort of modern standards that we expect, but that's a bit of a weird sort of contradiction given that this is not an entirely old model by any means. I mean, it was sort of produced 2021-ish. So it's fairly new in many regards. Price point, probably a little bit steep in my opinion. Maybe drop it down by about 10 or 20 pounds and you'd be in that sort of perfect area for it. I really like this design overall. I know that's a very sort of controversial opinion. I know that a lot of people feel very strongly about the direction that these locomotives went in. But I, for one, think they're absolutely fabulous and they really do look the part. This week, I wanna point out one of my favorite YouTube channels. This is a slightly larger one <laughs> than I usually do and that is Flying Scott. He is absolutely brilliant, fantastic sense of humor and he also takes a look at a lot of the locomotives that I'm usually interested in. He has a really great grip on the history of all of these locomotives and the British railway systems in general and he always puts together a really entertaining and thorough reviews. So do check out Flying Scott unless you have already, which you probably have. He's a fairly big YouTuber. <laughs> if you're watching this Flying Scott, thank you very much for your content. It's always very welcome and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it, mate. Until I see you guys next time, keep your engines fired and stay on track. All the best.